Hey everybody, in this video we're going to look at what the biblical text say specifically about hell and find out that it says hell is a five month period of torment after an asteroid impact and nuclear meltdown at the end of the age. But it says that everyone who survives will be rescued before the event. Okay, so let's just get started. If you do a word search using the King James Version in any online Bible like Bible Gateway here, you can find every instance that the word hell is used in the Bible. So for example, Deuteronomy 32.22 is the first verse in the Bible where, where the word hell is used. And it's translated from the Hebrew word number 7585 right here. And the Hebrew word is sheol. And it can mean underworld or grave, but it also means pit. And throughout the Old Testament, the word hell is primary translated, primarily translated from the Hebrew word sheol, which means pit. So right here in Isaiah 14 15 for example it even says thou shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit and then in Ezekiel 31 16 it says when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit so the word hell in the Old Testament literally means pit okay so what is the pit well in the video on the seven trumpets we looked at that it's linked below if you haven't seen it yet but this is Revelation 8 right here and it tells us that the seven trumpets describe a star falling to the earth so in verse 10 it says and there fell a star from heaven and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains and the name of the star is wormwood okay so let's just miss list the major points here. Wormwood falls upon the third part of the earth where the rivers and the fountains are. And then in Revelation 9 it says, a star fell from heaven and opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit and the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke that came out of the pit. Okay so this tells us right here what the pit is. It's a chasm that's created by an asteroid impact on the Earth. So wormwood hits the Earth and creates a great pit, and the smoke out of the pit darkens the sky in the third part of the Earth. And then in Revelation 18 it says, A mighty angel cast a stone into the sea, and that's how the great city Babylon will be destroyed. So Babylon is destroyed by a stone from heaven that hits the sea. And in Revelation 17, it tells us Babylon the Great will be burned by fire by the ten kings. So Babylon is also burned by fire by the ten kings in addition to being destroyed by this asteroid impact that hits the sea. So it seems we have three different events that are being described here. First we have a meteorite that hits the land creating a huge pit. We know it's the land because that's where the rivers and fountains are. Rivers and fountains are not in the sea, generally they are on the land. So it's saying this pit created by an asteroid impact will be somewhere on land. That's the first point. But then it says a meteorite will also hit the sea destroying Babylon. So either the same asteroid hits both the sea and land, maybe sliding into the earth, or we're talking about two different meteorites here, and that's plausible because not only do we know that meteors break up when they enter Earth's atmosphere, but it's also possible if it's a large asteroid that NASA or some other agency might try to shoot it down, causing it to break into two pieces, or Maybe um, it's orbiting the sun in a cluster due to a collision, maybe on its passage through the asteroid belt or breaking up as it passes the sun or whatever it may be. So the point is two large meteorites hitting on the same day is possible. 
So that could be what it is. But the third thing we're told here is the ten kings will burn Babylon with fire. So this burning occurs along with the asteroid impact that creates the pit. So the pit, the asteroid, and the burning all occur at the same time, roughly the same time period. So you might remember this chart from the other videos um, on the seven trumpets. We know the asteroid impact occurs during the seven trumpets. And um, if you haven't watched those videos yet, I recommend first watching the video in the seven seals, then the video in the seven trumpets. It's Both of those videos are linked below in the description box below this video. Um, and that'll explain what this chart is. But we know the asteroid impacts during the seven trumpets, and that asteroid creates the pit. So we'll put the pit right here after the asteroid hits. So that asteroid destroys Babylon. We have the fall of Babylon here. But we also know Babylon is burnt at that time, so we'll put the burning right here as well. Okay, so what is the burning that occurs when the asteroid impacts? In the book of Zechariah, it says a flying roll will be the curse that goes forth over the face of the whole earth. So we're just going to keep track of all the major points in this. The flying roll is the curse that will go over the whole earth. That's the first point. And this flying roll, it says, is going to enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that swears falsely by my name and it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it and that implies burning because it mentions it will be destroyed with timber in other words firewood firewood so this word consume which is number three six one five it means to waste away perish or be destroyed so the flying roll will destroy the house of the thief who swears falsely by my name. That's the next point. Okay, so what is this flying roll that destroys the house of he who swears falsely by my name? It gives us the measurements of it. It says it's 20 cubits right here. It's 20 cubits in length and 10 cubits in breadth. So 20 cubits is equal to 30 feet and 10 cubits is equal to 15 feet. So this flying roll is basically 30 feet in length and 15 feet in breadth. And breadth is the width or the span. So it's 30 feet in length and 15 feet in width or span. And this sounds a lot like a missile. For example, the Regulus, which was a nuclear armed cruise missile deployed from 1955 to 1964 and it was 30 feet long and 10 feet in wingspan so the measurements are very close right there so it is possible for a nuclear armed cruise missile to match Zachariah's flying roll measurements so the measurements of the flying roll resemble a nuclear armed missile and then Zechariah 14 seems to confirm that's what it is because it says this shall be the plague their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth so this is clearly describing describing a nuclear event right here so the flying roll appears to be the plague that burns off their flesh as they stand on their feet. But notice it says here that the destruction of the thief's house is caused by the flying holes. I'm sorry. It's caused by the flying rolls remaining in the midst of the house. So it doesn't say the flying roll hits the earth. It says it entered into the house and then it consumed everything, the timber and the stones. So 
this implies the destruction of the thief's house is by not just a nuclear event, but a nuclear meltdown. And then also notice it says the Lord caused this nuclear meltdown. It says, this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. And the Lord in the Old Testament is Yehovah. And we're told in Hosea 13 in Revelation 13 that the Lord Yehovah is the beast. So the nuclear meltdown, we're told, is caused by Yehovah the beast. Okay, so for more information on what the Bible says about that, you can check out the video linked in the description box below called The Dragon, the Beast, and the Harem, because there's a lot more information about that. But it's telling us right here that those who suffer from the nuclear meltdown are those who have fought against Jerusalem. So the flying roll affects those who fought against Jerusalem. But then it says something interesting down here. It says, there will be no rain upon those who do not come up to Jerusalem. And then Revelation 11 tells us it will not rain during the 1260 days of the two witnesses. So on the timeline we're given, it says there is no rain during that 1260 days of tribulation after the bride escapes. So for more information on that, you can check out the video Escape from the Serpent. It's also linked below in the description. So Zechariah, in the midst of talking about this nuclear event, tells us that whoever does not go up to Jerusalem will go through the 1260 days of tribulation, basically, right here. If they don't go up with the bride at the start of the tribulation, then there will be no rain upon them that go through the 1260 days of tribulation. So this means that Jerusalem here refers to the bride. And the bride is New Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven at the end. It's New Jerusalem. So right here, New Jerusalem, the bride comes down out of heaven at the end. And of course, the only way the bride can come down at the end is if the bride went up before that. So again, we talk about that in the video, Escape from the Serpent. So this is talking about New Jerusalem when it says it affects those who have fought against Jerusalem. It's talking about New Jerusalem, the bride. The nuclear event will affect those who fought against the bride. Then it says this plague right here will be the punishment of Egypt. So the flying roll is the punishment of Egypt. And notice it said plague. So remember the Israelites escaped after Egypt was inflicted with ten plagues. And these plagues are very similar to the seven trumpets and the seven vials. So you can see the rivers turned to blood in the first plague of Egypt, and that occurred in, or that occurs in the third vial right here, the third vial of wrath. And the vials of wrath are also known as the plagues right here in Revelation 15. And these are explained in the video on the seven trumpets and vials linked in the description below, in case you're interested in that. Okay, so then we have the three days of darkness in Egypt, right here. And this darkness is in the fourth trumpet, right here. And it's also in the fifth vial, right here. So remember, the trumpets and plagues or vials occur simultaneously and in one day. We talk about that in the video below. 
in the description box. And we're told this darkness is caused by the smoke that rises out of the pit that's created by the falling star impacting Earth. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit right here. So this darkness is caused by the asteroid impact. That's what we're told. We're told the sun is blacked out for a third part of the Earth. And if the sun is blacked out, then the plants will die and gnats eat dead plant matter. So an increase in dead plants means an increase in gnats. So that's plague three. And if all the plants die, then all the animals that eat plants will die too. And that would cause the death of the cattle, which is plague five. And if all the cattle die, then the fly population will increase because flies live off dead flesh. So the increase of flies would happen. That's plague four. And all of this so far, we're told, is caused by the asteroid impact. So remember, the plagues occur in one day. They're occurring simultaneously right here. The plagues occur in one day. So they're simultaneous. And we talk about that in the Seven Trumpets video as well. But everything in red right here so far, we're told, is caused by the asteroid impact. Because the river turning to blood, that's simultaneous with the third vial and trumpet right here, the rivers. And the third trumpet says that the river turning blood is caused by the star that fell from heaven. It's called wormwood because it made the rivers and fountains bitter. Okay, but look at the thunder, hail, and fire right here in Plague 7. That's in the first trumpet right here. And it's also in the seventh trumpet and the seventh plague. That's explained in the other video. So we know that's the asteroid impact as well. And it tells us in Revelation 9 when the fifth trumpet sounds and the star hits the earth creating a huge pit it says locusts come out of the smoke that rises out of that pit so the locusts are associated with the impact as well okay but what else it says the locusts harm the people without the seal which do not have the seal of God in their foreheads and they are tormented five months. So on our timeline, we need to add this five-month period after the impact. Right here. And it says, those without the seal of God will be tormented for five months by the locusts. And notice this occurs after the final group has left for safety. The 144,000 are sealed during the impact and are before the throne afterward, before the throne in heaven after that. And those left are not sealed, just like it said. But when we look at the timeline that these texts created, we realize that they're not, that those that are going through this torment are not part of the three groups of survivors at all. So at this point, when they're going through this five months of torment, it's too late. We've already, the three survival groups have already gone up right here. The bride, the two witness, witnesses, and the 144,000. So this is those in the beast kingdom. It's full of darkness, and they're in pain with sores right here. So the boils on the skin is caused by the locusts. That's what we're told. So another match to the 10 plagues. And the locusts are associated with the army, also mentioned in Revelation 9. And we talk about that in the Seven Trumpets video.
Okay, so most of these ten plagues of Egypt match the events we're told occur at the time of the asteroid impact. And we'll find out later that the frogs tie into it as well. But we're told Babylon the Great is the great city that will be burned with fire by the ten kings. And the great city, it tells us right here in Revelation 11, is spiritually called Egypt. The great city is spiritually called Egypt. So the flying rule is the punishment of Egypt, and Egypt is the spiritual name for Babylon the Great. That's the great city. Egypt is Babylon the Great. So the plague on Egypt right here in Zechariah 14, where the flesh consumes away while they stand on their feet, that's the plague of burning on Babylon. So the burning of Babylon is nuclear. Right here. It's occurring at the same time. So now we know the texts are telling us this burning of Babylon by the ten kings is a nuclear meltdown. And the ten kings that cause this are the ten horns of the beast. So again, this confirms for us that Yehovah is the beast, as it says in Hosea 13, because remember the Lord causes this to happen. The Yehovah causes this to happen. The beast, the ten kings of the beast, the ten horns of the beast cause it. Okay, so let's look at the beginning of Zechariah 14. The first thing it says is, the day of the Lord is coming. So the day of the Lord we know is the day of wrath right here. So that refers to the asteroid impact. We talked about that in the other videos. Then it says the Lord will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. So okay, they're, they're, when it says the Lord, sometimes it's referring to the deceiver and other times it's referring to the true Lord. There's deception going on so it says the Lord will get it's not clear which Lord we're talking about here but it says the Lord will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle the city shall be taken and the Lord will fight in this battle okay so when is when does the Lord fight in a battle that occurs when Christ returns so this is Revelation 19 right here it says I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His name, his name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. So the battle that the Lord is fighting in, whether it's the good Lord or the beast Lord, it's happening right here when Christ returns. And this is also described in Revelation 16. It says the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet go forth to the kings of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And he gathered them together into a place called Armageddon, right here. Which incidentally is the city of Megiddo, and that's in Israel. But notice this is occurring during the seven trumpets, this battle of Armageddon. It occurs during the trumpets, right here. And the seven trumpets occur in one day. So the asteroid impact, the burning, and the gathering of the kings at Megiddo all occur at the same time. So when it says in Zechariah, the Lord will gather all nations to battle, in that day there will be a great valley and the light will not be clear. He's talking about the battle of Armageddon that starts after the asteroid impact. So 
so right here the Battle of Armageddon after the asteroid impact right here and remember it's the dragon the beast and the false prophet who gather the kings of the earth to Armageddon and Zechariah says it's Yehovah who's gathering them to the great battle and in that day his feet will be on the Mount, Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem and there shall be a great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south so this is the impact right here it's the event that causes massive crustal displacement that we keep reading about all over in these texts that it says and you shall flee so there's the reference to the escape like you fled before the earthquake that earthquakes the, is there's an earthquake at the impact and in that day the light shall not be clear so again this is the darkening of the sky that occurs at impact but at the Mount of Olives in Israel it says the light is not clear but it's not completely dark either so this clarifies that Israel is not the impact location because we know the impact location is dark completely dark but um, different parts of the earth are affected in different ways so Zachariah's nuclear meltdown caused by the missiles occur at the Battle of Armageddon after the asteroid impact okay but then it says in that day living water shall go out from Jerusalem and the Lord shall be king over all the earth this is still Zechariah 14 and in that